Welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankar AIS Academy. Before starting the discussion, I have an important announcement. Shankar AIS Academy is going to conduct a prelims test series known as pre storming which is going to start from 21st of November. And added to that, there is a dedicated current affairs test series known as Chakra, which is going to start from 12th of November. You can enroll in both these test series by clicking the link given below in the description. So, today's topic of discussion is in this first article, we are going to discuss about the India and Indonesia relationship. And in the second editorial, we are going to discuss about a trade agreement known as RCEP and why India need to consider in joining that agreement. And in the third editorial, we will discuss about the India and China relationship will be discussed from a broad perspective considering means. So, without further delay, let us get into today's discussion. Take a look at this editorial. This editorial is mainly discussing about the recent development in the India and China relationship following the agreement at the BRICS summit in the Kazan. There, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the President Jinping exchanged many symbolic gestures. Even the troops share this feed between them, indicating that there is a willingness between both the countries to move the past recent conflicts and to restore a stability along the line of actual control. But we have to also note that this agreement is not having a clarity because there is no template for the new patrolling arrangement between both the countries or there is no specification based on the de-escalation procedures that has to be conducted between both the countries. So, what we have to learn from the mains perspective is about the important map points along both the countries. We also have to discuss what are the issues and how we can deal with the issues. Let us start with the mains question first. Discuss the impact of colonialism in the Indo-China relation and suggest the measures to bring a sustainable peace in the border and improve the Indo-China relation. This is the question we are given with. First, we are going to discuss what are the major concerns which are mentioned in this editorial. First is about the infrastructures which are built by the China and these infrastructure are mainly built along the strategically sensitive areas such as the Demchok, Doklam and the Aksai Chin. We have to note these three points specifically. First, we have mentioned about the Aksai Chin and here we have the Doklam region. Here we have the Demchok region near the line of actual control and here in the third slide we have the Doklam. So, Doklam is a tri-junction between these three countries that is India, China and Nepal and it is located near the narrow Silguri corridor which is connecting the India's northeastern states with the rest of the countries. So, it is a strategically important uh, place in India. So, about the first uh, so, the first concern is regarding this infrastructure build up along this region and second is about the India's response and regional security. India is very cautious as similar diplomatic efforts after the Doklam standoff which happened in the year 2017 were followed by many increased activity of the China in these sensitive areas. Doklam standoff is nothing but a military confrontation between both the countries in the year 2017 and this was mainly centered in the Doklam plateau. So, India is concerned about the rising activity of China. This may threaten the regional stability in this region. This is the second concern which is raised by this article. And third, we have the internal debates that is happening in China. This article is specifically discussing about many theories behind the motivation of China which can be possibly driven by many aspirations such as to control every inch of territory and to challenge the influence of other powers such as US and they might have the aspiration to challenge the influence of US in the Asia. This is the third concern and fourthly they are talking about the need for the transparency by the government. So, they are saying that the government has to be even more transparent with the citizens of India about the border issues and the security policies which can affect the stability in the region and the national security. These are the major concerns which are discussed in this article. Now, we will see what is the background of the issue in the China and India. So, when we start from the colonial times, British drew certain border lines. We have the Johnson Ardag line in the western side and the McMahon line in the eastern side. But these lines were very ambiguous in nature. 
and the McMahon line has placed the Arunachal Pradesh within the India, but China did not recognize this. They even claimed the Tibet as their own territory. Because of the lack of mutually accepted boundary between both the countries, this led to the future tensions between both the countries. So, this is the western sector, this is the eastern sector. Next, we have to talk about the 1962 war. Initially, during the 1950s, the China consolidated over the Tibet region and they built a strategic road through the Akshay Chin region which you can see in this map. But this region was also climbed by India. But the diplomatic efforts failed in the 1962 and in 1962, China launched an attack and they seized the Akshay Chin region and this region was temporarily so, after seizing the Aksai Chin region, they even temporarily advanced into the Arunachal Pradesh. This war deepened the mistrust and tension between both the countries. But after the 1962 war, what happened is that both of them fortified their positions. The diplomatic engagement improved in the during the year 1980s, which led to many agreements. One is the 1993 agreement and 1996 agreement, which led to the maintenance of peace along the line of actual control. However, one major tension and the problem was that this line of actual control was not formally defined. Talking about the standoffs and escalation, there were periods standoffs between both the countries, that is the military confrontation between both the countries, including in many years such as uh, in 2013, 14 and 2017. And in these standoffs, the Indian, both the troops faced many disputes which led to the continued tension between both the countries. And in recently, in 2020, the Galwan Valley clash happened. So, in this map, we have mentioned about the Galwan Valley. And followed by the Galwan Valley clash, there were many standoffs at the Pangong So and other areas. This led to many casualties and severe problem between both the relationship. And a severe problem in the relationship between both the countries. This is the overall problem that is existing between both the countries. Now, let us see what are the strategies and suggestions that can be done to improve their relationship. First, we can strengthen the diplomatic dialogue. This is this can be done by regular and high level talks between both the political as well as military leaders and this can develop the trust and ensure the consistent communication between both the countries. This can possibly manage the misunderstanding and the relationship between them. And secondly, we can address the problem by defining the line of actual control. As already mentioned, the line of actual control is not defined formally. This is the reason for the disputes in this region. So, both the countries can work together to find a clear, defined and mutually accepted border and this can be done by using a modern technology and satellite imagery and this will substantially improve the situation that is existing right now. We can also collaborate on various global issues such as climate change, be it poverty, elevation or in case of public health to strengthen the relationship between both the countries. So, this can be done by taking a united stance on platforms such as UN, BRICS to showcase their cooperation on beyond the bilateral issues that is existing between them. We can also engage in multilateral platforms for dialogue such as we have the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. This can create a natural setting to address the problem that is existing between them and explore many broader collaboration to reduce the tension that is existing now. So, by creating a bilateral security framework, we can potentially reduce the provocation and help in forming a stable long term relationship between them. Lastly, what can be done is that we can monitor the progress and reaccess the border and diplomatic relations regularly. This can be done to adjust the agreements and framework so that they can ensure they remain relevant and effective along the period. So, in this discussion, we saw what is the tension that is existing between both the countries and what are the steps that can be potentially taken to improve the situation. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this editorial and now let us move on to the next one. So, this editorial, the trade debate is given in Indian Express newspaper. So, what this editorial is talking about? The CEO of Niti Aayog, Subramaniam, is urging the country to reconsider 
to join the trade agreement such as the RCEP and CPTPP. So, we will, so before saying about these two agreements, he says that we have missed the opportunity in the global supply chain and the China plus one strategies. So, we have missed out this agreements which has led to the missing of opportunities as the geopolitical tensions are rising and there is a growth of US protectionism, he comments that we need to have a broader discussion to evolve the trade policy based on the current requirement. So, this is the crux of this editorial. What we have to learn from the main perspectives is about these two trade agreements, the RCEP, CPTPP and what is China plus one strategy and why we need to consider joining these trade agreements. Let us start with the main question first. Examine India stands on the regional comprehensive economic partnership and its implication on the India's trade and the manufacturing sectors. Should India reconsider its position? Justify your answer. You can answer this question and leave it in the comment section. And now we will see about the RCEP. So, this is a free trade agreements between 15 Asia Pacific countries. This countries includes the Asian countries, China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and the New Zealand. This trade agreement covers almost 30 percentage of the global GDP and the main aim of this agreement is to reduce the tariff to improve the trade and to integrate all the supply chains across the Asia specific region. In the year 2019, India opted out of this uh, agreement because it had concern over the trade imbalance that existed in that period. They also wanted to protect the domestic industries that existed within the countries. So, because of these reasons, India opted out of this agreement in the year 2019. But with the evolving global dynamics such as the trade war between the US and China, the supply chain shift, India has to reevaluate their stance to make use of the opportunity that is existing right now. This is what is quoted by the CEO of Niti Aayog. And secondly, we have another agreement, the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So, this agreement is a trade agreement and it is signed between 11 countries which includes Canada, Japan, Australia, Mexico and the main focus of this agreement is also to reduce the tariff and also to improve the standard of labors working in all these countries and to improve the protection to the environment and to promote the investment. These are the focus areas of this agreement. It originated early from the Trans-Pacific Partnership with the US initially part of the Trans-Pacific Partnership but they withdrew in the year 2017. So, both these agreements are trade agreements which wanted to promote trade and reduce the tax but India opted out of it. Now, let us see what are the recent development in this trade. So, we have to understand that we have a trade deficit with the RCEP nations and it is approximately 113 billion dollars in the year 2023 to 24 and the main contributor of this trade deficit to India is China which alone is accounting for about 83 billion dollars of the deficit and this was the major reason the trade deficit was a major reason for India opting out of this trade agreement and nextly we have a global foreign direct investment to understand about this we have to first understand about wh what is China plus one strategy. So, this is a strategy which is used by companies where they will diversify their manufacturing and sourcing by setting up their operation not only in China, but in a country addition to China. This will substantially reduce the dependence of China. So, what we have to understand is that India has attracted less FDI because of the China plus one strategy by comparing with the other countries such as Vietnam. India has shown only a minimal con improvement with respect to comparison with other countries. And third is the growth in the export. India is exporting to various countries, but this has been slower when comparing with the other countries which are in the RCEP. So, in the year 2023, India export grew by 6 percentage, while the countries uh, in RCEP such as the Vietnam saw a double digit growth compared to the India. And the main reason for the double digit growth from the RCEP countries is because they signed the trade agreements 
which improved their competitiveness in the global markets. Now, let us see what are the arguments that are there to consider this RCEP and the CPTPP trade agreements. First is the supply chain integration. By joining the trade agreements, India can become a part of global value chains and this will potentially and substantially and this will definitely enhance the competitiveness especially in sectors that are uh, such as electronics, textiles and the pharmaceuticals. Next is the one that we already mentioned which is the China plus one strategy. Because of the rising cost in China, the many companies will seek alternative manufacturing bases. By signing these agreements, India can make use of the opportunity by providing a lower cost of manufacturing and can potentially improve their economic growth. And the third important reason that we can consider for joining these uh, trade agreement is the diversification of trade. By increased market access because of signing this agreement, this can help India to diversify its export and it can also reduce the over reliance on the traditional markets of India such as US and European Union. So, these are the three major reasons which we can consider for signing this agreement. One is the trade diversification, next is the China plus one strategy and the third is the supply chain integration. With this, we will conclude the discussion on this editorial and now let us move on to the next one. So, this article titled Delhi must reach out to Jakarta is specially discussing about the importance of India to strengthen its relationship with Indonesia because Indonesia relation with the China is deepening and we have to strengthen our relationship with Indonesia to make advantage of that. So, we will have a broad discussion about the India and Indonesia relationship from the mains perspective detailing. So, let us start with the mains question first. In the current light of geopolitical scenario, how countries like Indonesia and India which have the earlier cultural ties are also equally potential for the political ties. We have to substantiate. So, let us start the discussion by discussing about the historical and cultural ties. India and Indonesia share a rich cultural heritage starting from historical links be it uh, the ancient uh, maritime trade routes or with respect to the spread of Hinduism and, and Buddhism in the Southeast Asia. We can see the influence of the Indian culture in the Indonesia's temples such as the Barabudur temple and the Prambanan temple which is shown in this pictures. We also have uh, many Indian epics such as the Ramayanan and Mahabharata and these are also integral to the art forms that are in Indonesia. For example, this shadow art Vayang Kulut is also a puppetry show which is depicting the Indian epics. We also have the Kekab dance. This is a dance which is depicting uh, scenes from Ramayana. We also have Ramayana ballet. Also many leaders such as uh, the Indonesia's first president Sukarno and added to that we have the India's prime minister uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. They also had a shared vision with respect to the non-alignment movement. So, non-alignment movement is nothing but a movement where they chose to find an independent path in the international relationship which is separate from the influence in the major cold war that happened between the US and Soviet Union. So, the, in the NAM movement, they have opted an independent path from these parties. And we also have to talk about the Bang Bang Conference which is 1955 which happened in the year 1955. In this conference as well, they both shared a, that is, that is uh, Indonesia and India shared a common vision. So, this is a conference that brought the leaders from all the independent uh, Asian and African countries to mutually discuss about the shared interest and the opposition to the colonialism, racism and the cold war that happened in that period. So, these are the things that we have to understand with respect to historical and cultural ties. Now, let us see about the economic ties. So, India and Indonesia have a strong economic ties with bilateral trade reaching of about US dollars 38 billion in the year 2022-23 and both these countries are aiming to achieve a target of 50 billion in trade by the year 2025. We also have to understand that India is investing in Indonesia, especially in sectors like IT, infrastructure 
and pharmaceuticals. Other to that, there is also many private public partnership such as the Smart Cities Mission, the Bharat Mala Pariyojana. Both these are another important thing is the India is a larger importer of palm oil and the Indonesia is the world largest palm oil producer and it exports to India. And the other areas of corporation are tourism, renewable energy, pharmaceuticals, IT, digital infrastructure. Talking about the defense and security corporation, we have to talk about the Indo-Pacific strategy. So, according to this strategy, India and Indonesia is uh, they are sharing concerns over the maritime security, freedom of navigation, especially in the Indo-Pacific region because there is a rising influence of the China in this region specifically. Both these countries are also collaborating to ensure a free, open and a rule-based navigation in the Indo-Pacific region. Also added to that, many joint exercises are conducted between both these countries. For example, we have the Samudra Shakti, which is a naval exercise which is conducted between both the countries. This will potentially enhance the military interoperability and the strategic cooperation between both the countries. Another important thing that we have to understand in the defense and security relationship is about the India Ocean Rim Association. So, this is a regional association which aims to promote the economic cooperation, peace, sustainable development among all these countries which are bordering the Indian Ocean. And the main aim of this regional association is also the maritime security. India and Indonesia also cooperate on the counter-terrorism efforts, the anti-piracy cooperation and the intelligence sharing. So, now let us discuss about the strategic significance and the geopolitical dimension. The first thing is we have to balance the China's influence. The Indonesia's position in the Southeast Asia and its control over the critical sea lanes, specifically the, specifically the Strait of Malacca. So, have a look at this map. Strait of Malacca is a strait that is between the Malaysia and the Sumatra which is an island of the Indonesia. This strait is connecting the Andaman Sea which is the part of Indian Ocean with the South China Sea and this is an important choke point around the world. So, because of the important position of China in this choke point, it is, it is strategically important for the India to strengthen ties and to counterbalance the dominance of China in this region specifically. Next about the Act East policy, this evolved from the Look East policy which began in the year 1990s. The main aim of this Act East policy is to deepen the ties with the Southeast Asian countries. The main focus of India to have a deepened ties with the Southeast Asian countries is also China. So, with respect to ASEAN, Indonesia is a leading member in ASEAN and it plays a critical role in the regional groupings. So, by having a strong relationship between India and Indonesia, we can enhance the influence of India within the ASEAN. Another important thing which we have to understand with respect to Indonesia is the relocation of the capital. Initially, the capital was at Jakarta. Now, it is shifted to Nusantra. Take a look at this. So, this is a planned city in the East Kalimantan on Borneo in 2019. They are going to shift the capital from Jakarta to Nusantro. The main need for the change of capital is to address the problems such as overcrowding, environmental issues and to promote the balanced development. Now, let us see what are the challenges in this relationship and what can be done to and what can be done to improve their relationship. First challenge is the influence of China. Indonesia is having a growing ties with China, especially in initiatives such as the China's Belt and Road Initiative and this can pose a challenge to India. And secondly, it is the trade imbalance. The trade balance is actually heavily favoring the Indonesia due to the import of palm oil and coal from Indonesia to India. So, we need to diversify the import and balance it. Third challenge is the bilateral engagement. Even though there is a high potential, only there is a slower bilateral cooperation in the field of defense and infrastructure than what it is expected. So, we require a more proactive diplomacy from the Indian side. So, what can be done? We can strengthen the collaboration with the India Ocean and the Indo-Pacific countries mainly by focusing on uh, 
novel exercises or by conducting intelligent sharing which will improve the regional security. We can also aim for the trade diversification and explore new areas of investment such as the digital economy, the renewable energy and the MSME. We can also build cultural and educational exchanges to build a stronger people to people relationship and to promote the goodwill among them. So, so with this we will conclude the discussion on this article and we have come to end of today's video. If you found the video informative, do hit like, give your feedback, says comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.